Whew. It's been a while since I last made a video for this series. Anyways, what's up everybody? This is Edward on another episode of Gamer Questions on Gamers Clinic. In today's video, we'll be exploring... No, wait. Let's use the word re-exploring a decade-old question of... Should you get a wired mouse or wireless mouse for gaming? With wireless mouse technology having improved quite a lot over the past decade to the point where even some gaming gear manufacturers are claiming that their wireless mouse are just as fast as their wired counterparts, does it still matter today which connection type you should choose today for gaming? So with the attempt to answer this question from a perspective of a passionate gamer, I've chosen three reputable mouse from Razer to demonstrate and compare the differences in gaming performance reliability between each connection type. The Razer Lancehead Tournament Edition will sort of serve as the baseline for overall gaming experience with a wired mouse. As for the wireless candidates for today, they are the Razer Viper Ultimate, a flagship wireless mouse featured in a few eSport events, and the Razer Atheris to test and compare gaming performance over Bluetooth connectivity. And just for fun, I'll also throw in an extra $17 Logitech M280 wireless mouse that was my former work and productivity mouse at the office just to see how it will hold up against gaming mouse. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're new here to stay updated. And that's... Godlike. The details. In order to see how much wireless mouse technologies have improved, let's quickly go over why a decade ago, any seasoned gamer would most likely tell you to get a wired laser or optical mouse without even blinking. The main issue back then was mostly with the significant input lag or latency over a wireless connection. The input lag is usually a result of signal interference from other nearby wireless emit devices emitting radio frequencies. I remember my fair share of frustration with my first wireless mouse back in 2006 when I didn't believe these warnings. My Logitech MX600 laser wireless mouse would often lose connection for a few seconds with the USB receiver in the middle of a PvP battleground match in World of Warcraft, which sometimes really drove me crazy. Other times, when playing online matches in Counter-Strike or Command & Conquer 3, the cursor would move itself and auto-issue move or attack commands, and I think you know what happens next. The second issue was battery life. For some reason, the mouse I had loves to run out of battery at the exact wrong moment and they'll also run out really really fast. I remember getting in trouble with my parents when they found out that it was actually me who borrowed the TV remote's battery. I mean, come on, where else can you find batteries in the middle of the night when you're just a student without a car, right? With the additional AA batteries to power the mouse, some people might dislike the extra weight that comes with a wireless mouse. So eventually, I switched back to a wired mouse after accidentally rage killing the MX600. So fast forward a decade to today, where we now have more modern and more reliable versions of wireless mouse to game with. Or are they not? To find out how reliable each connection type is, I have used each mouse for one hour before switching to the next model for a total of four hours on, of Call of Duty and Overwatch gaming sessions per day. So during a one week period, I was looking for any immediate noticeable changes when switching to the next model and noting them down. In addition to that, during the testing hours, I've also set all my wireless electronic devices to constantly play YouTube playlists while setting them on the table nearby my mouse area to try to create as much radio frequency interference on top of the 14 wireless networks that are already available at my place. I've also set them all to the same DPI settings of 4000 DPI to avoid any bias caused by the sensor differences. All right, let's start with the Razer Viper Ultimate. After the one hour mark, the immediate noticeable change when switching over was how much lighter this mouse is, followed by not having that feeling of the cable resisting my every movement. You know that feeling where you feel the cable is pulling your mouse back? Yep. That feeling is gone. And also having using the Razer Viper Ultimate for a month now, it is actually as good as Razer advertises it to be. Their hyperspeed wireless technology is stable and fast, that sometimes I really forget that I'm using a wireless mouse. There were zero incidents where the mouse had lost signal or had any sort of performance drops during this whole one week test period. Next, 
I switched to the Razer Atheris which is connected via Bluetooth and the immediate noticeable differences are the extra weight from the two AA batteries and slightly less responsiveness in the mouse movements. It wasn't to the degree of the cursor freezing or having random movements, but the slight delay of the screen starting to move after I moved my hand could easily be felt. This could probably be due to a slower polling rate which is capped at 500Hz per second when using Bluetooth connection, or the Bluetooth signal to the mouse being interfered or delayed by the Bluetooth audio signals to my speakers. Occasionally, the audio on my speakers would also random skip or drop a second or so from, from the interference. It was like this every time I switched to the Viper during this one week period. It didn't make the game unplayable, but it was sort of unpleasant and not smooth to play with a Bluetooth mouse. Luckily, this mouse also has a 2.4GHz mode and adapter stored within for serious 1000Hz polling gaming mode. But either way, it was still better than gaming on the free wired mouse I got when I bought my MSI GS laptop. Lastly, I switched to the Logitech's M280 wireless mouse which is connected via its own USB 2.4GHz dongle. This right-handed mouse is lighter than the Razer Atheris, and because it isn't designed to be a gaming mouse from the beginning, the performance difference was immediately noticeable. Though, when I say performance difference here, I don't mean the connection performance because there were no signs of any interference or disconnections during this one week period. Instead, it is because the mouse is capped at 1000 dpi and have a polling rate of 125Hz and gaming at such a large resolution of 5120 by 1440 makes the mouse movement feel a bit too slow for me. Looking around and aiming will require huge and wide movements as if gaming with a trackball mouse which I'm no longer accustomed to. And this in turn makes a fast-paced first-person shooter game super challenging to play. So having tested these three mouse equipped with relatively modern wireless connection technologies, I think it would be safe to say that it doesn't really matter that much anymore if you get a wired or wireless mouse for gaming. But here's the catch. If you de do decide to get a wireless mouse, make sure it is a good wireless gaming mouse using the 2.4 gigahertz wireless connection, such as the Razer Viper Ultimate, Logitech G502 Lightspeed, and Logitech G903 Lightspeed or SteelSeries Rival 650. As these gaming mouse companies have managed to find solutions to improve the connection, quality of radio frequency based wireless latency and stability, it is no longer an issue for us gamers today. And as for Bluetooth, it should be avoided for fast paced and competitive games as the input latency is still quite high and signal is easily susceptible to interference. The other things are only a matter of personal preference and budget. As wireless mouse are still considerably more expensive than wired, their wired counterparts and will still require you to recharge your mouse after every use. Though most newer wireless gaming mouse will have the option to let you plug in the mouse to charge and continue playing as a wired mouse in case you forgot. So you no longer have to worry about stocking up on batteries or stealing the remote batteries. I personally use the Razer Basis Ultimate as my daily gaming mouse which you can check out the review up here because I prefer the freedom of untethered movement from a wireless mouse and really cannot tell or feel the difference from gaming with a wired mouse. When I was still using the Lancehead Tournament Edition before I got the Basilisk Ultimate, there were times where I moved the mouse and accidentally pulled on the cable too hard that I actually damaged my USB port. So yeah, that is why I'm back to gaming on a wireless mouse again after 14 years. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Hit like if you did as this will help the channel more than you know it. And I'll see you again in the next video.